I think it's very important to allow people to take responsibility for their own development. Too many people feel they're being pushed onto courses or workshops or through programs which don't necessarily make, meet their needs at that particular time. So there's a, a lot of just in case in, instead of just in time. So we have to let people take responsibility for their own development. Um, and we have to respect that people at different times have different needs and different wants uh, and not try and force them down the uniform route. Some people are quite prepared to take risks, to, uh, to do more things in a more unconventional way, uh, which will be in their teaching as well as in their, their own professional development. So for some people, workshops, courses are, are ideal because there's a social dimension to that as well. For others, uh, mentoring, co-mentoring, working with colleagues, building up networks will be a very effective way of their own professional development. For others, writing, reflection, um, engaging in, in, in very many different contexts. But I think what we don't give people the opportunity to do enough in their own professional development is to take risks. And so how we encourage people to take risks, maybe in a managed environment, but in a way that um, they can learn from it. I was awarded a National Teaching Fellowship in 2005 and my project was to support the professional development of those engaged in learning and teaching roles across their faculties and across the university. And at first I did um, some traditional residential courses and then I I got bored with that and I felt they weren't successful so I was invited by a colleague to read the literature on open space technology and so I ran a couple of residential events using open space as I call it where the, there were heads of department, professors, lecturers, technicians, administrative staff and there was no sense of hierarchy in the room because everyone felt they had something to contribute so the technician uh, had a particular view on the way students learnt or engaged. The head of department could give the costings of particular things and the administrator said, administrator said if you do things in this way we'll have queues of people outside our door. So it was recognising that everyone in the team, in the department, had something to contribute. And that, I think, was a very powerful uh, way of engaging people in their professional development as part of a team. I think the main challenges are trying to engage people in things that they're not used to doing. Um, so there may be a resistance, a belief that, well, if we're working with our colleagues, they, they act just like students who say, well, just tell us the answer, tell us how to do it. And so there's the resistance, there's the fear of the unknown, that they don't want to try different things. Um, and also, the Different people who they're working with may have different priorities. So some of them may be very managerial, some of them may be to do with improving student learning. But what we should do is help them focus on themselves and not just and give them the opportunity to to, to be more divergent or diverse in the way they behave uh, and to stamp their own identity uh, on the way they, they take responsibility for their own development. Um, and that is a real challenge because, uh, uh, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but HR departments do tend to go down a particular way of um, outcomes-based or attributes-based ways of, of training and development. And we need to perhaps, uh, working within that, or to use the good academic developer's term, help subvert it in a particular way. I think an important question around professional development is how people take responsibility. So working with your colleagues or for yourself, how can you take responsibility for your own development, for the processes you use, um, so that they have meaning, they have value for you?